to another episode of the Dice Bearers podcast. I'm here with Alexa, of course. Hello there. And my name is Chris. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We are going through the legendary legions found within Gondor at War. Yeah, so what we're going to be doing today is basically going over the composition of each legion, the any additional or special rules they gain, and a list at 750 points for each of them. So, without any wasting of time let us get into the first list the rangers of ethelion so what are the rangers of ethelion well it's faramir leading his merry band of mumak shooting goons <laughs> so what can you bring in this list so you can bring faramir captain of gondor with his bow coming at a base and he can also bring a horse for 10 points then you can bring madril captain of ethelion damrod ranger of ethelion frodo baggins with mithril coat sting and elven cloak samwise gamgee with the elven cloak and smeagol you can also bring a captain of Minas Tirith who can bring a horse, a bow, a lance, or a shield, and a Skilioth veteran with a bow, shield, or spear, the warriors of Minas Tirith with warhorn, banner, bow, shield, or spear, and the ranger of Gondor with spear. Now this list is built around rangers of Gondor. Chris, tell us why that is. <laughs> yeah, so there's a few additional rules with uh, this legendary legion. The first of which is a ranger of Thillian force must include Famia, captain of Gondor, who is always the army leader. There's an FAQ to say also must include uh, the hobbits and Smeagol as well. And this force can ignore bow limit. Not basically. quite. There's, it's a little bit different. So what they do is that Rangers of Gondor, which are led by Faramir, Madril, Damrod, and I think the other two new named Rangers as well, correct, do not yes. count towards your bow. Yeah. That's how they ignore bow limit. I mean, you're very rarely going to need the Captain of Minas Tirith profile. It, it just means that if you have a Captain of Minas Tirith, any warriors in it do need to follow bow limits. So it's yes. to consider when writing the list. You don't just ignore it entirely. So that is true. Important. That is true. The well, other thing as yeah. well is the Rangers are the one that ignore it, not warriors of Minas Tirith. Yes. Although you probably wouldn't see warriors with bows in this list, probably I don't not. think. I don't see why yeah. What are our other rules, Chris? Yeah, uh, so that's the first one, is you can ignore the bow limit with the uh, rangers in those warbands. Another special rule this force has is uh, Frodo, Sam, and Smeagol, they have to be deployed together. They can be deployed on their own, or they can deploy be deployed in Farmer's warband. They cannot lead warrior models themselves, however, so they can't be in a warband leading troops. And the other one is rangers of Gondor from this army list gain woodland creature. So it's a very, very shooty. It is, it is <laughs> absurdly shooty, and um, I think that it's interesting that the two. This list used to be just Terra at five hundred. Yes, I think with the changes to force you to bring Smeagol, Thingo Ga Gamji Samwise, yep. and the Smeagol Thingo and Frodo. Yeah. And Frodo, listen, okay? <laughs> it's been a while. Um, having to bring all three of them brings you down like one seventy points. Mm. Which means you can't just play 500 points with 40 bows like you could before. Yeah. Um, they do have their own utilities and strengths, but their strengths aren't what made this army oppressive before. And I think with that change, it's a lot less oppressive at low points. Yes. With that being said, let's get into our 750 point list that we have for them. So we've got Faramir, Captain of Gondor with Bone Horse. He is bringing with him Frodo, Sam, and Smeagol. They're going to go with him, sending them out alone. If you know there's no Maelstroms or anything like that, you can do that. But just for safety's sake, may as well deploy them with Faramir. It also just means that that warband has an insane amount of power built into it. Because you have the ring, you have a ludicrous amount of might, and you have Faramir, who is your main Yeah, yeah. Power. So th at this 750 points, I do think that the Frodo actually comes in pretty nice. The ring has some downsides, obviously, but Frodo and Sam both have a fair bit of utility. Smeagol's... Uh... He's he's really the, the the weak link of the trio, isn't he? It, it, to uh, tokenistic, yeah, perhaps, token, maybe. <laughs> uh, and then Faramir is bringing six rangers of Gondor, five rangers of Gondor with spear, a warrior of Minas Tirith with banner, shield, and spear, since only warriors of Minas Tirith can bring the banners for them. Makes sense. We've got Madril, captain of Athelion, with six rangers of Gondor and six rangers of Athelion. Wait, no, they're all rangers of Gondor. It's so confusing, isn't it? It is. Uh, yeah, I got confused too. With spears, uh, rangers of Gondor. Uh, Damrod, Ranger of Athelion, and then two Rangers of Gondor, and then two more Rangers of Gondor with spears. Angborn with five Rangers of Gondor, and then Mal Mablung, Mablung, Mablung yep. with five Rangers of Gondor. Yeah. So I bring us a total of thirteen might, forty six mortals, forty three bows, <laughs> <laughs> and a full fat seven fifty points. Yeah. It's absurd. So and also infinite might on your shooting because uh, Angborn, your boy, gets to spend a free point of might every turn on his shooting attacks. Yes. So for those who don't know. Uh, Angborn and Mablung are models found in the Quest for the Ringbearer book. Uh, so this uh, Legendary Legion was rewritten in that book to include these guys in it. Uh, so Angborn can spend a point of might every single turn without reducing his own store. 
and on shooting attacks for shooting that's good yeah. yes and Mablung uh, not only gives out elven cloaks within six inches of him but he also turns your opponent's elven cloaks off when friendly models shoot whilst they are within six inches yes. of and this well. includes your heroes as well which is actually what just makes it absurd it just gets really silly the only people who don't get it are the, the the little trio. They don't get it. It's only Rangers models that get it, so that is yeah. something to be aware of. That being said, if someone is trying to take a shooting <laughs> trade with you, you don't, I don't think anyone wins that, do they? Even with Blinding Light, I honestly think you just have so many I shots. The math, the, like, I mean, yeah. especially if, if it's Gandalf, but if it's like Lady of Light, she actually just dies. Oh, she's still on <laughs> yeah. defense. Yeah. She like, actually hitting on dies. sixes, you don't care because all your shots are going at her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this list... Uh, it's an absurd amount of shooting, quite frankly. Yes. And it's still a decent fighting force with the fight four on the Rangers. They're only strength three, but like a fight four line, even at you know low strength, low defense, can still be tough to crack. And it's not even that. It's the fact that like this mo- this army has 46 models, right? If I have 50 models on the table, by the time I start the fight, I will have less models than him. <laughs> that is a fact. And there's also fairly decent heroes here. I mean... Faramir isn't like a top tier hero, but he's a decent fighter. I he brings the strike. Yeah. And when combined with what Frodo and Sam bring, he actually does become decent. Frodo gives it Frodo gives him access to the ring, which lets him take on big heroes for a couple of turns. Exactly. Yes. And Sam has free hero combat if com- Frodo's in combat, which means you pair Sam up with Faramir, you call the free heroics for him. He can call a strike to try and take someone out. You can just go in for kills. Yes. It is it's enough here once you start fighting that it's not just a total loss if your shooting doesn't end your opponent. Yeah. <laughs> and in a lot of games it will just end your opponent. In saying that though, the ways to play into this list is you just need to catch this army quickly. Uh it has a laughable amount of might uh that can be used on marchers in this list. Uh it has a lot of ways to I move. Think Madril can board. march. Madril can march and Faramir can march, if I'm correct. Mm, I think Faramir can. Really? Oh. I, I'm not I'll be wrong. I'm not okay. sure on Faramir's actions. But well, definitely definitely Madril can march, which is already three might worth of march, which is yeah. already a lot. He's your big three one one marcher. Like he is the reason this list feels so elusive. Because obviously, even if Faramir does have March, you don't want to be spending his might as often as you Yeah, you want to keep it for the strikes and whatever else he needs. Because yes. he is your main he is your biggest fighting hero, which isn't that great. He does come with a horse. He does. Quite, quite yes. oddly, but yeah. <laughs> considering that's li- quite odd that him and the, the captain, maybe, is it maybe in the quest of Ringbearer version changed? I no. need a look, no? no? Okay, he's the wrong horse. That's silly. I don't know why he gets a horse. He should be on foot, but... Yeah, I mean, like, I'm glad you couldn't bring, like, heavy armor or something like that Yeah, as well. that is That would true. be he's, actually... Or, or a lance. You're going to get a lance. The yeah. fact you can't get a lance keeps him in, t- in, in sort of mediocre killing power territory. Yeah. With that being said, finishing off the uh, the shooty boys that bring down Mumak, let's get onto some Mumak action, Chris. Take it over the Grand Army of the South. Yeah, so the Grand Army of the South is the force that's represented on the Pelennor. Uh Basically, this force can consist of Saladin, uh, Raza, a Haradrim King, a Haradrim Chieftain, and a Hasharan, all of which come with all of their full suite of war gear options, no restrictions there. You can bring a War Mumak of Harad, uh, again, with all of its war gear options, you can bring a Haradrim Taskmaster, and you can bring Haradrim Warriors, and Haradrim Raiders, and Serpent Guard, and Serpent Riders. All of which come with all their war gear options with no restrictions. The cool thing about this list is you also get access to Far Harad models. So you get the Mumak Warrior, you get a Mahud King, you get a Mahud Tribesmaster, you get a War Mumak of Far Harad. And you get the Mahud Warriors, the Mahud Raiders, and the Half Trolls, all of which, again, come with their full suite of war gear options. Uh, what are the special rules you get in this list? Oh, the special rules. So for additional rules, we start off with, you must either include Solid and the Serpent Lord or the Mumak War Leader, though you can bring both. Only Mahud models may lead Mahud Warriors. That is a slight limitation. Uh, at least 50% of your models must have the Haradrim keyword, and you must have at least one Mumak. You also gain the Hail of Poisoned Arrows, giving you 50% bow limit. The Makings of a King is probably the strongest rule in this list. Your army leader, so that'll be Saladan or the Mumak War Leader, and this is especially important on the War Leader because normally the Mumak cannot declare heroics for itself, may declare a free heroic action at the start of any fight when they're engaged with the enemy leader. This means you can call strikes, you can call combats, it just makes your Mumak so much harder to deal with. 
Yes. And it's why this list is so scary with the Mumak and why I call it the Grand Army of the Mumak. For yeah. some reason, he changed that. I don't understand. <laughs> um, furthermore, War Beasts of the South gives all your Mumaks Harbinger of Evil, which is already even more obnoxious given that your Mumaks cause terror. It's terrifying, <laughs> literally. Yeah. And Warrior Pride gives Mahood warriors that have been six on Mahood Hero, uh, gives them automatic pass on Karo's checks, which is something that isn't part of the Mahood Army bonus. Yes. So essentially, you get the best part of the Haradra army bonus and the Mahood army bonus in its entirety, as well as just a couple of extra special rules. It comes with the downside of you must have at least one Mumak in the army, uh, so you can't do like a, a list like what I did at HobbitCon, which is half troll heavy and that sort of stuff, without bringing the Mumak. Uh, and of course, you have to also bring either Saladin or the War Leader. So this list really incentivizes you to bring the War Leader. Uh, I mean, this is the list for the Mumak. With that yeah. being said, shall we get onto the list, Chris? Exactly, let's do it. Yeah. Take so it away. This list has Saladin on Armored Horse. He's leading five separate riders and two Hajim Warriors with Spear. And then you have the Mumak War Leader in the second warband, who's leading, leading five separate riders and 13 Hajim Warriors with Bow. So this list has six Might, has 28 models, 13 Bows, and 750 points on the nose. Obnoxious. This list is so annoying. <laughs> so because the, the frustrating thing is, this list forces you to fight the Mumak because yes. there are exactly the right amount of models in the Mumak that you cannot break it without killing someone in it. Exactly. So there are fourteen <clears throat> bases if you include the Mumak's base itself in the Mumak's Haldir. If you choose to deploy all of the uh, all bar one of those archers in the actual Haldir itself, and that basically means you have to target something in the Haldir whether that be the war leader, one of the archers, or the Mumak itself. And the really infuriating part about this is if you're fighting an army that can shoot out warriors in the Howder, they can all just go prone in turn one. And it means that the, the war leader is the only model that will be shot at, so you have to just kill him or the, war, or the Mumak itself. It just means this army is obnoxiously hard to fight without... A way to bring down a Mumak, basically. And that's uh, that's really annoying. <laughs> Especially when it's the War Leader, because he has so many things that forces you into bad spots. And that's the thing, yeah. And it's like, you have to spend resources to fight the Mumak War Leader. He cancels some of those uh, resources, and he gets free resources himself if you're putting your army leader into him. And most of the time, you have to put your army leader in because they're the best word block you have. Exactly. That's, that's the thing that makes it so frustrating, is that the best heroes to take on the War Leader are usually other leaders and he has a direct counter to other leaders, and that's what makes him so strong. Yes. Like, if this army fought the Rangers of Athelion, like, everything in the Howdy goes prone, and <laughs> Saladin and all of his friends hide in the back of the board, and the Mumak just goes stampeding. Have you watched down. the movie? Yeah, but that was the wrong Mumak, okay? <laughs> that was, like, Mumak 17. It was the guy oh, that didn't... Man. Actually, no, it would have been Mumak 19, because oh, it was I the see. one that didn't count, right? Ah, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I see yeah, how yeah, it yeah. is. I see how it didn't count. <laughs> It's like a warm-up game, right? It doesn't count. <laughs> That's all our games, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, shall we take it to the next list? Yeah, let's. And so, the Grey Company. So, what can we bring in the Grey Company? We can bring Aragorn the Strider. He can get armor, his bow, and his elven cloak, so sadly no horse for him. However, he gets something special in this list. We can bring Halbrad from the Rangers with the banner of the Urban Urban Star. He cannot bring the horse again. Legolas with armor or elven cloak. Gimli with his Elven Cloak, Eladan and Eldra here with Elven Bow, Elven Cloak, and Heavy Armor, and the Rangers of the North with Spear. Again, no horse option. So all foot. The Great Company must always include Aragorn Strider, and he is the army leader, and they can deploy as a single warband. What do we get, though, that makes this a little bit more special? Yeah, it so you get, it up. you get a few rules which are really powerful. The first one is basically the uh, Rangers of the North style uh, army bonus in that all of your named heroes can stand fast for the Rangers of the North, as well as they all get two attacks whilst they have the infantry keyword. Uh, you don't get horses, so they'll always have the infantry yes. keyword. The <clears throat> other huge rule in this list is that Aragorn does not pay for his sword. Andrew, Flame of the West, is a free upgrade. How many points is Andrew normally? 40 points. So you get a 40-point discount for not having any mounted heroes. Yes. And you also get to bring some other heroes you normally don't get to bring. Yes. Which will take us into the list. March and shoot. So we've got Aragorn with Andrew, Armor, and Bow, Legolas with Elven Cloak, Halbrad with the Banner, five Rangers of the North with Spears, and seven Rangers of the North, giving us 21 Might, 15 Mortals, 15 Bows, 
750 points. I'm so sad that the dwarf isn't in this list. I understand he's an inch slower than everyone else, <laughs> thus is dead weight, but... <laughs> I mean, he also doesn't get to shoot. Yeah. Oh, he has a throwing axe. Come oh, on. To be fair, though, he would move faster than everyone because you're always half moving, right? That's true. Yeah. He, he would, would actually be the he fastest would, model yeah. in the world. <laughs> you know you have problems when Gimli's your fastest model, yeah. He's a natural sprinter, isn't he? <laughs> I love this list. It's a list that I would love to play, especially too, yeah. with Shagrat or Amda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, listen. Okay. I guess we should talk about the, uh, the the nature of this list, shouldn't we? Yeah. So how do you play a list like this, Alexa? Well, there's a few different ways, depending on your matchup, really. Um, some matchups, you probably can just go in and, you know, clean house. Like, if you're fighting, like, a fight three or Kami, you could actually probably just go in and be like, you know, I'm going to clean house Aragorn. Legolas and all the rangers are just going to go in and chew through orcs. But once you start fighting fight four and especially fight five armies or armies that have something like Amdor or Shagrat, heroes that mm. specialize in killing other heroes, that's where you have to play a kite game. You yeah. cannot, cannot engage straight up against armies that can fight you because even though you have two attacks on a lot of your models, you are only 15 models. Even you know in the mm. best case scenario, you're rolling maybe you know 30 dice in a, in a turn for your combat. Yeah. Whereas your opponents are going to be, you know, even without too high of a model count, easily going to be having like 40 to 50 attacks worth of dice. Yeah. And that can just overwhelm you so quickly because ranges are fragile. I mean, Legolas himself is pretty fragile. So you yeah. need to use the fact that you get Mr. Aragorn and free marches and you just run away <laughs> and you, you pick off enough models, you pick off any horses on heroes, and then you can try and fight. Maybe even, you know, like sacrifice a guy, keep hiding back, you know, things like that. You just have to play a really long game get the right kills with your shooting and then start fighting yeah i also yeah i also think it's really important to consider where you want to fight with this army so as soon as deployment uh, has begun once you know which side of the board you're deploying on you basically need to pick where this army is gonna pick its battles yeah, you need where to it's gonna end up fighting plan out the next like few moves and where you want to end up yes so you can sort of limit what your opponent can do maximize the impact that your legolas and aragorn with the fight six can make yeah and like that is actually quite tricky right you have to basically predict or force your opponent to move in a way that lands them in a place where you want to fight and if your opponent has uh, their wits about them they will be thinking the exact same thing where does this army's low model count uh, come to bear the most it's in those tight corridors it's in those now charging lanes where Aragorn can stand up the front and uh Halbrad can sit behind them with the banner and you have Legolas who's shooting out all the horses and you have enough power built into that little concentrated front like ideally this army wants to fight four models across most of the time yeah and if it can do that you as the player playing this army can absolutely steamroll people and that's what makes it really tricky to play against yeah it can be a very powerful army that being said there are also just horrendous matchups for it mm. anything that can match your shooting you're gonna really struggle against because while your ranges are pretty good at three plus shoot with strength two bows yeah if you're fighting something that can match your bow count it can very quickly start to be really poor trades because you're gonna have in the ways to hit their archers so only yes. half your shots are going to be hitting their archers, whereas all of their shots are going to be hitting one of your archers, Yeah, which can just be really rough. And that's when maneuver really comes into it, to the point where if you don't have priority, you might even just want to walk out of shooting range entirely. Yeah, And then just on the turns where your opponent wins priority, maximize your shots and minimize theirs in a way that trades efficiently. Or even just sitting at, you know, if they have their front line as warriors and their back line as archers, sitting at 25 away from their archers so you can shoot their front line. And just like get that. free Yeah, trades. exactly. Yeah maximizing those trades is really tricky and really important because this list can just so quickly lose points every guy you lose is 31 30 points at list at minimum you know yeah. and that's a big hit yes the other thing to consider as well is if this is an army you're looking at taking to tournaments is you need to learn how to play this army quickly uh there's a lot of finicky measuring there's a lot of strange intricate moving parts in a list like this and being able to pick the right places to plant your bow shots can be slow it can be laborious to roll 15 points of might on one dice models yes like uh, when you're shooting with them and keeping track of it and doing all the paperwork for this army can be an incredibly slow process and i know that i've seen lists like this just absolutely stall out a game and have a three turn game in a two and a half hour tournament <laughs> because it wasn't intentional but just the way the game ended yeah, up flowing it, like i said it's a very tricky list but i think it is very very strong in the right situations Yes. 
Like, the right matchups can absolutely gut a stomp, but equally the wrong matchups. Like, this army into an all uh, mounted Rivendell list. Oh, Rivendell would just run you down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or they gun get, you down. They have a choice. They, <laughs> they have the choice. That's the worst part. Rivendell becomes a more efficient shooting list than you. Very quickly, yes. Yes. Because their cavalry are still defense six, and they will reload a hit because they get the luxury of standing still. Sometimes, yes. Well, most of the time, because well, well, yeah. I think you m- move ten inches straight into the range, and yeah, then yeah. Just and, then, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, no, I agree. The the Rivendell list is terrifying. That's yeah. the thing. I think that overall, I think maybe eighty percent of games are pretty pretty solid, like skill matchups in a sense. And there's like sort of ten percent where this army's like, lol, I got to stomp you. And there's ten percent where you're like. Cool, I guess they got run down yeah. by elves and horses today. But the best part about those matches is you get lunch early. Yeah, it's true, yeah. it's true. I like those matches. <laughs> Alrighty, shall we <laughs> jump into uh, our next Legendary Legion? Yes, the Riders of Theoden. Take it away, Chris. What can we bring with Riders of Theoden? Yeah, so you get uh, the big man Theoden himself. Uh, so all these models must come mounted. So he starts on an armoured horse with the shield. Uh, you get Aemir. Uh, who comes with an armored horse and a shield again. You get Dernhelm as the one profile. You get Darewine uh, with a horse. You get Gamling on a horse, who has the war gear option of the Royal Rohan. Of the Royal Standard of Rohan. You got it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I always hate that banner's name. Uh, you get Elfhelm on a horse as well. You can bring a uh, just generic Captain of Rohan on a horse. They get the options, all the options, the bow, the heavy armor, the shield, and the throwing spear. You get a Rider of Rohan, who gets the Warhorn banner throwing spear options, and you get a Rohan Royal Guard on a horse as well, with a banner and throwing spear as their additional war gear options. Uh, what are the special rules of this so, list? A Riders of Theoden Force must include Theoden. I'm not surprised really. Oh, wow. There. Yeah. Jeez. It's in the name, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and he is always the arm leader. Dernhelm may de- be deployed as part of Elfhelm's ball band if you wish. If you do so, Dernhelm will count as an independent hero. The special rules you get are Ride for Ruin and the World's Ending, which is the base Rohan army bonus, which is plus one strength on the charge. And then the other big rule is that once per game, as long as Theoden is alive on the battlefield, he may declare that he is using his special ability, Death. So every Rohan hero within 12 of Theoden may declare a free hero combat or a free strike without expending might. Yes. Pretty like, good. Pretty good, isn't it? It's insane the amount of power you can do with this list. And I've been on the receiving end of absolutely devastating charges. Uh, I remember very, very distinctly a turn one charge that just decimated my force and yes. basically took me out of a game because they had seven heroes, called seven combats, <laughs> and killed, I believe it was like 20-something orcs that was in a turn. Yeah. That sounds yeah. very... It's like a movie, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I killed Theoden back, but it was just... <laughs> it, it was still hard. It yeah. Was <laughs> um, we should say there are two changes in the FAQ that hit this list pretty hard. This used to be probably one of the best lists in the game. I think it's still a pretty solid list, but... It's just not an cha- order yeah. win. So yeah. the two main changes that hit it, um, or the main change that hit it, was the change to the Royal Standard of Rohan, Gamling's Banner. Yeah. It used to give every hero within three of him a point of might back if they had no might remaining. Yeah. Now he can only pick one hero. Yeah. Now, that's still pretty strong in the context of this list, and I still think he's worth bringing as a result. Yeah. But it, you can't quite get to the insane levels of... I would say power. I think you can still reach the same level of power. It's more that you're missing the reliability of having the might to spend every turn to win those fights, to keep going, to fuel your engine of destruction, as it were. <laughs> yes. And I think that's the part that really made this list scary. Like, the amount of times I would see in competitive play where, uh, you know, you'd call your death and then the next turn you'd call all combats again and blow through all of your might winning combats, getting kills to move and everything just basically stacks itself within three inches of gambling. He gives all of them that run out of might that point of might back, and you have your little hobbit hiding inside of Dernhelm, call a point of, uh, like, get a point of might back and call the move, and everything just fans back out and does it again. And yes. that's the part that made this list scary. It played for the three-turn break, basically. First turn, you either do the combat-centric stuff with death, or you save that for the second turn. But either way, you're blown through your might on the turn, you're not using death, and then you're getting all your might back for that turn three kill. Yeah. Crazy. Now the list sort of is less reliable in the sense that you don't have that might to just win the fight. That being said, here is what we have got for you guys. It is Theoden, King of Rohan, with three royal guard on horse with throwing spear. Aomir, Marshal of the Remark, with 
two Royal Guard on horse with throwing spears and one Royal Guard on horse with throwing spear and banner. Downhelm with two Royal Guard on horse with throwing spear, gambling with the Royal Standard with two Royal Guard on horse and one Royal Guard on horse with throwing spear. Elf Helm, Captain of Rohan, three Royal Guard on horse with throwing spears, 16 might, 19 models, zero bows, 750 points. So this is a all Royal Guard army. Why? I just think it's cool. I think it's sick. <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> and unironically, all Royal Guard is very punchy. Yes, so, so the, the terrifying part of this is it's a, it's a fight five charge. Yes. From the Royal Guard. Fight five, strength four, and are oh, not axes, they are swords. If only they had axes, oh, yeah. Imagine. Yes, if only, if only. <laughs> well, that doesn't stop Tom. That's true, yes. You could drop one more Royal Guard, give them all axes, you know? I mean, that's that's something. <laughs> yeah. If you know you're fighting a bunch of dwarves, do it. <laughs> something, something Eastlings episode, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the same thing all over again, except we're fight five now. Yeah. <laughs> on the same points. But, like, legitimately, this list has so much punch behind it. Yeah, yeah. So it's still... It's it's obviously not playing as much around that insane, insane, you know, 30 might game every time kind yeah. of deal. Um, but you still have the exact same sort of hero punch on the turn you call death. Yes. It's the follow-up turns that you're lacking on, but as long as you can get a second turn of charges with the, like, second wave of Royal Guard even. Like, if you charge half your Royal Guard and your heroes in... You call your death, you reset your heroes. If your opponent tries to wrap your royal guard, your second wave and your heroes come back in and then you just crush through yeah. them. And that's kind of like the bait of this list, right? Uh, usually in a cavalry-centric list, you want to always be moving second, basically. You want to be moving from just outside of charge drain to make all the charges. And this is suddenly a le legion that can actually play going first comfortably because death allows such a quote-unquote free reposition of everything. Yes. And even if your opponent is stacking into you, you can still call a heroic strike. It's not like you can only call the combat for free. It means that when someone's trying to go for the coup de grace on air there, you can still call a strike and just strike up for or, free. Or call death with three of them. Air Mare calls a strike, three of them come in, peel off everyone, and then Air Mare's got a suddenly a really good 1v1 with whatever hero tried to fight him. Yeah. Like, exactly that, right? Like, when I played this Legendary Legion and uh, I lost all those orcs, I still managed to pull a Shagrat into the fight with uh, Theoden just because my combat happened first and I just got lucky with it. But, like, AMA, but if, yeah, if, if, AMA if, called a combat and, ki and Flash killed a troll. <laughs> yeah. Like, I rolled a five, even with a banner, and AMA rolled a four. He said, cool, I'll blow two points of might to go up on this. And then and when right. he went to wound, right. he had his four dice. He rolled two wounds successfully and said, cool, I'll mic the final one up. Like, yep. it's crazy the amount of punch you can get with lists like this. It is very interesting, yeah. And it, yeah, and the other thing you can do, while you have no bows, against an army that has limited or no shooting, you can still just throw spears in them. You exactly. like 11, 12 throwing spears, elf helm. Yeah. You can just sit around being like, oh, throwing spears, throwing spears, until, you, <laughs> until, until they sit in the spot where you're like, oh, now you've, you're in a... You know, until you frustrate them into walking out of position and you commit your entire army to them. <laughs> yes. And that's the thing that still works with this list. Yeah, you have no bows, but you have so many throwing spears in this list. And you can still play the shooting game. Like, you have an absolute field day if you get a mission that favours shooting. Let's play Clash by Moonlight with Clash this Clash by Moonlight, Fog of War. Like, all the ones that encourage you to play kiting games, to play longer, drawn-out games. This list still does really well. Yeah, I think that the the lists that you wouldn't be able to win a shooting war with a Royal Guard throwing spear heavy list, you wouldn't win a shooting war with a bunch of riders anyway. Yeah. They're the kind of lists that have, you know, 13, 14, 3 plus bows that are going to trade really well with your riders anyway that you just want to crash into and wipe out quickly. Yes. So and at that fine. point, you're better off having the fight five. So. And the D6. Yes, exactly. So I think it just works out better, I think, overall. Although, I would say... <laughs> Uh, if this list gets brought up to a higher uh, points value, for example, like an 850 points, I would consider a couple of Riders of Rohan for nothing other than your objective grabbers and that sort of stuff before the break. But your bodyguards. You do have bodyguard, but you'd but rather yes, yes. use the bows to play the skirmish game. Yeah, and if it looks like you're breaking, yeah, yeah. I think a, you swap a, them A few out, of them right? are perfectly. I think a few Riders of Rohan are a decent addition as you go up in points. Yeah. So I agree. This list is just very specifically planned around this this idea of just all royal guard all in this huge charge boom hit yeah, him hard exactly now onto a list that has no big charge <laughs> the men of the west what do we have here chris yeah so in this army list you get aragon uh in his king elisar form uh he comes with no upgrades because you cannot bring a horse form you get uh legless who you can bring armor with you can bring gimli uh no upgrades you can bring aimer with only a shield as the upgrade 
You can bring Melee Dock, Brandy Buck, Knight of the Mark with a shield. You can bring Peregrine Took, Guard of the Citadel with no upgrade. Gandalf the Right with no upgrade. Belgrond, no upgrade. Prince Emerhill with no upgrade. <laughs> Elahand and Ero here, uh, who you can purchase something for. It's heavy armor for both of them. And no bows. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you can bring a Captain of Mysterith, who can bring a bow and a shield. You can bring a Captain of Rohan, who can bring a bow, heavy armor, shield, or throwing spear. You can bring a Captain of Dol Amaroth with no upgrade. And you can bring a warrior of Minas Tirith, a warrior of Rohan, and a knight of Dol Amaroth, all of which can bring all the normal upgrades, with the only exception being a knight of Dol Amaroth cannot bring a horse upgrade. And that's such an alliance. Yes. So, all models of the army must have the infantry keyword. Okay, so no cavalry. Only Gondor models may lead Gondor warriors. Only Rohan heroes may lead Rohan warriors. A man of the West Force must always include Aragorn, King Elsa, and he is the army leader. The special rules for this army list are This Day We Fight, which while Aragorn, King Elsa is alive on the battlefield, all models are fearless essentially, they automatically pass all courage checks. And for Frodo, once per game at the start of any phase, so long as he is alive, Aragorn can declare that he's using this ability. Friendly models within 12 increase their fight value by 1 until the end of the turn. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a it's um it's a really weird list because it has a bunch of lists that are based on synergies and none mm. of their synergies. Yes, it's like oh, what do you love about Rohan? Oh, it's the punching power on the charge. Cool. Yeah, plus one strength. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Using plus one fight. Yeah, let's dismount her and not have yeah. Uh What do you like about uh, uh, fiefdoms? I like my fight five pikes. Oh, sick. Let's not. Wait, I can't those. bring my. Yeah, 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 that's the thing that upset me the most. I was like, I mean, I looked at this list like a year ago. I was like, okay, whatever. And then we came to write in this episode, I was like, oh, actually, you know what? A pike list in this could be kind of cool. You know, Fearless, the plus one fight for a turn. You get Aragorn, he can lead the Dolamroth. And then I was like, I can't bring most of the good models from Dolamroth. Yeah. And I think that's what really frustrated me the most, right? It's just like the way it breaks down is just really awkward. And as well as the fact that you have to have the right keyword hero to lead the troops associated with yeah, them. Yeah, it means that Legolas can't lead troops, Gimli can't lead troops, uh, Gandalf can't even lead troops because he doesn't actually have the Minister's keyword. Uh, no, 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 other no, way he... around. The heroes can't. Uh, Gondor mainly... hero mainly lead Gondor warriors. So someone without that keyword could bring either? I wonder no, no, if that's no, true. No, 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 he would need the Gondor keyword. He doesn't have. Oh, I guess you. He... No, he doesn't have the Gondor keyword. He wouldn't be able to lead them. He, okay, needs, okay. he needs the Gondor. He needs to be a Gondor hero to lead Gondor warriors. Yeah, in that case, it's just a very it's, frustrating it's, one. It's yeah, a, the, that that limitation, the fact that you have all these really cool, unique options that you normally wouldn't get in these armies, mm. and you can't even bring trips with them, and that just really sucks. Yes, <laughs> and I think like yeah, let's let's, let's jump to the, the list, list because so, so, so the list I, I came up with something I think is okay. So we got Aragorn with eighteen guys, all tin cans. Yep. We've got Prince Emerhill with eight Knights of Dol Amroth and then eight Warriors of Minas Tirith with shield and spear and then Baragun, Guard of the Citadel with two Warriors with shields, two Warriors with bow and spear, one Boria with Minas Tirith with bow. So yeah. it's a decently high model count at 42 with two pretty decent heroes that wish they were mounted. Yes. Um, Aragorn is less less so restrained because he has Andril, but Emerhill missing the lance really sucks. Yeah. The core of this list is you have that center of Knights of Dol Amroth at that fight five and then Aragorn goes off on the flank and makes his own path. So the, the knights sort of hold the center. Aragorn's warband is just this blocker that protects him and makes space for him to work. Yeah. And then Baragond, he's got a uh, bodyguard. He can go sit on an objective and shoot people with his, with his little gang of merry bowmen. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's kind of the way you have to play a list like this, is you have to just let Imrahil and Aragorn do all of your heavy lifting. Yeah, Imrahil and his little blob of Alliance of Dol Amroth is going to be your sort of troop-based punch and yeah. then aragorn and his little band are gonna be you know he's gonna be looking to get into heroes call his free strikes and then you just try to form as many shield walls as you can and just live yeah basically i think this this is one of those grinding lists that doesn't do a lot of grinding outside of the heroes it's gonna wear you down with two cuts that happen over and over and over and over yes. and over and hope that a thousand cuts doesn't bring the list down first yes it's just it almost works this list would feel great if instead of all these Minas Tirith warriors and Knights of the Lamroth, I had a bunch of pikes that were then being protected by Minas Tirith warriors with shields. Yeah. That would feel so much better as like a, as a concept, like an army fantasy. Mm. No, but the way it is now, because 
every one of your you just kind of get the most basic vanilla troop from each faction rather than any of the interesting models yeah like i wish you could bring royal guard i wish yeah. you could bring axemen stuff like that right yeah all the all the cool models from these three lists you can't bring <laughs> that's yeah. the most disappointing part of it i think at least yes and i think that's what makes this list so difficult to kind of write for and why you see it so little well, well the, the joke is that if you played 1500 points to be a really good list <laughs> Oh, if you played 15... Imagine if you had 1,500 points of fearless troops just running and, and around. Then, and then, you know, you got, you got you got all these insane heroes. You've got Gandalf, Aragorn, you've got the twins, you've got it. Legolas. You have all these insane heroes that are really expensive, and if you played a high enough points value, that'd be really good. Yes. Low-key, <laughs> like, if you actually hero-hammered this list at high points levels, it would be terrifying. Yes, at high points levels, it'd be like the White Council with a lot of bodies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what it is, right? <laughs> but but the thing is, you're never playing. Like, maybe 1k is like the, the most reasonable points value you'd play this at, like like a points value that people yeah. might play. <laughs> but it's not, 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 not at 750. <laughs> no. And I think, yeah, I think you nailed it perfectly, right? Either really low points, like 400 points, Algon leading just a full complement of Warriors and Minas Tirith. And then being fearless is actually pretty And being neat. fearless is huge, right? That's yeah. actually a really, really powerful warband. But then that sort of 500 points, probably to about 850 and above, just it's feels... so awkward because you can't bring your toys. Yes. Because you can't bring enough warriors to keep them alive. Yeah, and it's like you also want to bring like models like Aemir and some Rohan, but the Rohan models doesn't seem just don't. powerful the, at the, all the relative. Problem, that's the other like, problem, is that the difference between a warrior of Minister Earth and a warrior of Rohan for one point, it's like, just be D6 and shield wall. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? It's so much... It's the, 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 the three main troops here have overlapping roles. Yeah. That's, even, that's the other thing. Like, if, if they each sort of faction had a unit that complemented the others that would actually have something interesting going on yeah. but they're all frontline dude yes and then one can bring spears so they're all your spears do you know what i genuinely wish the three troop choices were go on warrior minister mm -hmm. royal guard and axemen of lost that could be neat if that was your three troop choices that would be a really and then, and then we really go really forward cool. in time and steal the fight in ranks rules from warren rohan and give it to oh, the royal yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah i see i see i see yeah but then take away the pike support part of the axemen and I do mean, something really weird like that, right? <laughs> okay. Listen. And heading away from the men of the West to a man who will have no men in his West. A man? <laughs> Not a man. In fact, How an orc. dare you? <laughs> <laughs> well, take it away now that you're offended. <laughs> yeah, so this is the army of Gothmog. What comes in this army? Well, you get Gothmog Lieutenant of Sauron with a wog and a shield as his options. You get Goroth, Captain of the Moranen. You get Guerts, Master of Reserves. You get Gothmog's Enforcer. I don't know why he doesn't have a name, but hey, semantics. You get Zadush, Orc Captain, not Kadush the Firecaller. Don't get those mixed up, although I wish you could bring that. If you I'm get good. a Moranen Orc Captain who can bring a shield or two-handed weapon. You get an Orc Shaman that can bring a Wag. You get an Orc Taskmaster. You get an Orc Drummer. You can bring as your troop choices a few options here, actually. You can bring an Orc Warrior with the full suite of upgrades. You can bring a Moranen Orc with all the normal upgrades as well. You can bring a Mordor Troll. You can even bring a War Drum with the Mordor Troll. And here's where it gets really interesting. You actually get access to Siege Weaponry. So you can bring a Mortal Orc Siege Bow, which comes with, uh, as upgrades, the Engineer Captain, Flaming Ammunition, and the additional crew. And you can also bring a Mortal War Catapult, which again can bring the Flaming Ammunition, uh, Engineer Captain, and additional crew. But it also has one really powerful upgrade, which is Severed Heads. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different episode, Chris. Yes. Gone off the yeah. uh, Alexa, tell me what I can do with this Legion. Well... You have to bring Gothmog, but yep. he is a hero of legend, which is a nice upgrade. That's three extra models you can bring. And then Gothmog uh, gives the Age of Men special rule normally, which is normally a three inch hatred of men. It is increased to 12 inches. Additionally, the time of the orc has come, which grants his whole army rerolls to wound against everything. Or is it just men as well? No, no, no that one is just rerolls to wound once per game. Yeah, yep. so once per game, reroll all wound rolls is board wide. Yes. That's pretty scary. Yeah. Also, Gothmog can stand plus for friendly orc heroes, which is pretty good because they're all cowards. Yeah, look, you like this is the list of the three on ones, to be honest. <laughs> like, you get access to essentially three heroes that are three on one. You have Guritz, who is your marcher. You have Goroth and uh, Zadush, who are your killers. So, Goroth is the strength five, two attacks, Burly, 
who can throw orcs in the way for him. The Dush is the three attack guy with two swords who can turn his strength into his defense value and vice versa. And then you also get Gothmog's Enforcer, who is the one might, three will, one fate guy, who can give his will for Gothmog to call heroic moves whilst within three inches of his Enforcer. So confusing how his name Gothmog's Enforcer. But regardless, <laughs> uh, you get access to a lot of different choices here, and you get access to all of the orc in the world. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty solid list. I really, Gothmog's Enforcer... Uh, no, sorry, not Gothmog's Goroth. Is the one that is really, I think, the, the shining star of three one ones. Yeah, he's absurd. So let's get into the list. Tell us what are we bringing in here? Chris? Yeah. So this is the list I vote uh, with Gothmog with a wag and a shield. He has nine man and orcs with a shield and eight orcs with a spear and shield. Note the orcs are just orcs, not man and orcs. You also get one orc who has spear shield and a banner in this warband. Uh, you then get Goth who leads six man and orcs with shield. He has five orcs with spear and shield. He has one orc with a spear, shield, and banner. You then get uh, Zegdush with six man and orcs with shield and six orcs with spear and shield. And in the final warband, you get a shaman on a wag with five man and orcs and shield. So you get 10 might, you get 51 models, no bows, obviously, and 750 points on the nose absolutely terrifying <laughs> no, yeah. this is a it's a very cool I, I, I play this list quite a bit it's quite scary especially obviously when you're playing men this list is obviously significantly better against men yeah. than other other races as it were um because of the plus one wound across the entire well not the entire army but 90 percent of it most of the time yeah the only model that wouldn't get the plus one to wound is the trolls well no i'm more talking there is still a 12 inch limit to it so if you have a really flung wide battle line <sighs> you might miss out on it or if goth Morgan's ends up going on a flank to chase a heroic or something there there are situations where you might not have it you do need to keep that in mind <sighs> that is true but it is most of the time gonna be a plus one to wound across your whole army yeah now interesting with this legion is Gothmog is the linchpin of it uh, there's been two games I've played so far where Mr. Gothmog has been flash killed, and this Legion falls apart very quickly without him. So. He is a very flash killable character. Unfortunately, the defense seven and a wog makes him moderately okay against a lot of shooting, but concentrated fire will just bring this guy down over a couple of turns. Yeah. And so I think a very real consideration is bringing a couple of. Uh, Honesty bows, our community calls it, just a couple of orc bows mixed into there just to help make that issue slightly less and to dismount the odd hero too if possible. The real threat is uh, is fight six boys are his bane because yeah. he is excellent against fight five heroes with strike because of his master of battle. Yes. But the moment a fight six hero gets into him, he's uh, he's pissing himself, let's be honest. Yeah. Good thing no men are fight six. Uh, there are a couple That's yeah, the yeah I don't know about that chief yeah <laughs> listen <laughs> okay you know what the real terrifying part is go on then. Uh, there's this guy called Bard right I was actually and thinking... Bard has a son not... who's gonna be the same fight value as Gothmog the lieutenant of Mordor <laughs> just think about that right like the lieutenant the guy who leads the armies who dictates the flow of battle all that sort of stuff the Ed right York hand man to the him. witch king himself a, a child gets to go bing bong donk I'm fight five let's strike off it's a 50-50 let's go <laughs> well listen um, I think it's perfectly fair <laughs> yeah and balanced right <laughs> I think so it's 40 points come on man <laughs> yeah uh, listen man <laughs> <laughs> legitimately though like this list can do a lot of killing very quickly uh, you have a lot of strength for with Moraninox uh, the way mm. I would bring my Moranins would be about 75% of them have axes and the last 25% with maces. You essentially want to partner up a mace or two with each of your heroes just to provide knockdowns and try to combo that with combats and all that sort of stuff just to get the ball rolling, so to speak, with your punching power. But the other stuff is, I think, really going to show in the fact that this list has two banners in it. So being able to fight comfortably on two fronts, ideally you want uh, Goroth and Zadush on one side, and you want Gothmog and the Shaman on the other, and just forcing tempo with that. Calling combats, calling strikes if you need to, but ideally not, and just trying to flash down your opponent's army, especially if it's a men army, is how this list succeeds. I think it's also interesting to talk about um, the plus, so the rural wound rule. I think generally speaking, it's important to try and use it as early as possible. Yeah. Because... The sort of trap is you kind of think, oh, I'm going to wait till the right turn to use it. 
but the right turn to use it is when you have the most models fighting and that's usually going to be the first two to three turns of combat yeah because the more of your models die the less models you'll have fighting the less fights you'll win the less wound draws you'll make yes so i think using it in those first two or three turns just to get a couple models lead and snowball the fights yeah. is the right way to use it generally speaking unless you have a very specific desired purpose like a flash kill on like a big monster or hero or something yes i was gonna say exactly that <clears throat> the yes, other reason so, so. you'd want to use uh that then uh, in a later turn is for example uh i played a game where i had to play a rivendell list right and i had to deal with a glorfindel and an elrond oh, and so they had a much lower model count than i had it was almost this exact list uh, just I didn't have the shaman. I swapped that out for Gurit. Uh, I've learned from that mistake. Don't worry. <laughs> but that was basically the list I was bringing, right? Yes, yes. And basically, what happened was I was able to deal with the elves quite quickly. Strength four made a mockery of that defense six, or sometimes even defense five. And I could crunch through that quickly. But Elrond and Glorfindel and this stupid captain on horse, <laughs> it just like I realized after two turns of combat that. I was actually quite lucky in that I forgot to call it in turn one because it meant that I could then set up Goroth and Gurrits into one of the heroes and uh, Gothmog and Zadush into the other hero. Yeah, and, and, then, and then call it, call double strikes, just go for the kills then. Yes, exactly that. And I was actually quite fortunate in that the Goroth fight was killing the captain <laughs> and so I was able to combat strike off of that one yeah. and then tap into Elrond and Elrond had called a combat instead of a strike because oh, they didn't no. realize the coup de gras that I was that, trying to do. And it meant that Elrond was trapped between a Gothmog who just stole his combat and let uh, Zadush call the, uh, the strike up for him. And then on the other side of it, Goroth and Zadush. Uh, Goroth yeah, and, and the... That's, that's yeah. the alternate power of this. If you're yes. fighting a list like that, where there's a few linchpin models, that's when you save it. But if you're fighting a list that's looking to fight troops to troops in a fairly even way, that's when you just use it early to maximize the rolls. Yes. And it means that you can just crunch through things so quickly once you have that tempo lead. Because this army with 50 models, if you get two models ahead, you are going to stay two models ahead for the next turn and turn that into three or four models because now you're going to get more traps then you're going to turn into six or eight models then you're going to turn into 12 models and your opponent just broke and you're fine and that's what the real strength of this army is it wants to outnumber trap and overwhelm quickly so how do we beat it uh you shoot it to death uh you kill gothmog that's, that's how you beat two it. ways you yeah. shoot it to death or you kill gothmog yeah uh the list can still work without gothmog if it's not a men army especially but he <clears> just provides so much strength and that reroll really does come in clutch if you use it well i think the other big problems are hordy armies that fight for any army that's hordish scale at fight for even men armies can be quite tough to deal with an yeah. army like i actually think um garrison of dale would be horrendous for this army list to take even yeah. though it's a men army you're gonna lose so many models to that strength three shooting hitting your d5 orcs mm. and you're gonna get into those fights and you're just gonna not win because it's a it's an army with almost equal model count starting out at fight for and yes. that's going to be a struggle there's, there's a bunch of str and even well i think dwarves might actually be the worst possible matchup for this to deal with right yeah uh like because the, the fight i mean depends on the kind of dwarf army but a high model can dwarf army like the army of thrall stuff we talked about oh that would be the a, army of thrall would just yes. be like donk, donk, it's a walk donk. in the park yeah, yeah the army of thrall would just walk into this and be like oh the age of men well it's the age of the dwarf yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> there was no yeah. age of men yes yeah. i think the interesting thing with the way Mordor tends to work is yes it's infantry are powerful and yes in the larger numbers the infantry can do work but it flips the switch almost where an army like uh, Dale for example it provides its power through the troops it provides the power through the new models that have come out through Forge World and the strength 3 bows its heroes they aren't amazing they're there they're good they're strong they're whatever they'll hold the line yeah but compared to an army of Gothmog, with Goroth, with Zadush, and with Guritz, all leading the charge next to Gothmog himself, that's where the killing power comes in. Because you have two models that are strength... Uh, up to three models, actually, that are strength five. And you have Gothmog as well. And three of those four models can cause strikes. All of them are very adept at calling combats. Like, you have the right tools to do the right things. It's just a lot harder to do it because you have to almost invert that scale and rely on your heroes to do the early work to then let your troops do the traps and that later 
Now let's get into another list, which was uh, a single grand hero. Yeah. The Return of the King. Take it away. <laughs> what can we bring in this list? So in this Legendary Legion, <clears throat> you get access to Aragon in his Strider form. He can bring an Elven Cloak as his only upgrade. You get Legolas, who can bring armor and an Elven Cloak. You get Gimli, who can bring an Elven Cloak. Then you get a bunch of ghosts. You get the King of the Dead. You get Heralds of the Dead, which can bring shields for five points. You get Warriors of the Dead with their full suite of upgrades, that being Banner, Spear, and Shield. And you get Riders of the Dead. Alexa, tell me about the special rules. This army must include both Aragorn Strider and the King of the Dead, Mr. Chris. <laughs> and Aragorn is always the army leader. Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli may all lead Warriors of the Dead and Riders of the Dead. The Heir of Isildur rule gives Aragorn another free Andrew. Seems to be a common theme, hey? Dude, crazy. that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> we have, we've seen this before. <laughs> in the Grand Army of the South, that's what oh, I yeah. saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Task well, weapons, yeah, yeah, OP. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Uh, the King of the Dead <laughs> gains the Harpinger of Evil special rule, which is the Army of the Dead, Army, of the Dead army bonus. Mm. And the big one, spirit models from this army list count as being in range of a banner if Aragorn is within six inches of them. Yeah. So he gets to be a six inch banner like he does in his King Elastar form, in his Strider form, yes. and he gets free Andrew. Pretty good. It is a very, very cool uh, Legion. And I think this Legion has cropped up a lot in competitive play. Uh, and I think there are two reasons why. Uh, Army of the Dead itself, even just without all the new Legendary Legion special rules for them, is just an inherently strong army to fight. Uh, they have high defense, they're a terror line, and they kill you based off of your now lower courage because of the Harbinger special rule. Those things alone just make it so tough to deal with this list. And then on top of that, you get an Aragorn with a free Andor. Like, what? Why? Why not? That's what I could say. <laughs> it is a very powerful list. I do think there are some weaknesses, but let's talk about the list before we get into how to play against it as it's. So what have we got? Yeah, so in this list, I wrote, you got the big man Aragorn himself. Uh, no upgrade on him because he gets the blade for free. He has one Rider of the Dead in his warband, three Warriors of the Dead with Spear and Shield, and four Warriors of the Dead with just a Shield. You then get Legolas himself leading six Warriors uh, with just a shield and two with a spear and shield. And the final warband, the King of the Dead, with one rider, five warriors with shield, and two warriors of the dead with spear and shield. So you get one bow, 24 models, seven might, or oh, seven plus might. Plus infinity. Yeah, and 750 points on the nose again. Yeah, so it's a pretty solid way to run it. I think you ran against something similar with your Mahood and Thingo list. Was it pretty much this, or was there any difference <sighs> when you played against that? The issue I found with this Legendary Legion when I got to play it at a tournament was, uh, yes, it's inherently powerful, the terror. Yes, it's inherently powerful with Aragorn. But Aragorn can only be in one place at a time. Don't mind that. That's just the cat falling. <laughs> uh, like, yes, Aragorn is incredibly powerful. But the way this list kind of works on a bigger scale in missions where you are forced to play into each other so i played this li uh, this list in seize the prize and aragon picked up the prize only to then give it to legless and legless ended up being the only model left alive on my opponent's side of the board basically <laughs> he uh i won the game but it was a minor win because legless still had the objective and basically what happened was our lines Met in turn two, as in the Caesar Prize it almost always does, and a bunch of half trolls basically just got to win a bunch of fights club, consistently. Club some men. Yeah, and <clears throat> although my half trolls weren't actually killing things, because they're strength five against the defense eight, I don't actually kill Warriors of the Dead often at all. I had eight Warriors of Kana in the list, <laughs> and they were killing a laughable amount of models. Yeah, the, the interesting thing with this list, and the reason I... And not, I mean, maybe it's my armies that I play, but I've always found that the Warriors that really struggle to do much. And if you fight against the wrong list, like, I mean, if you fight against Corsairs with this, you're just like, wow, cool. So you're the same defense as Courage anyway? And yeah. you're higher fight than me and you have twice as many models as me. And it's like, Aragorn can do a lot, but he's on foot. Is and he, he can't kill 50 Corsairs. <laughs> he can't kill 50 Corsairs before they kill, you know, 20 Warriors of the Dead. Yeah. And, you know, especially if there's, you know, any terror ignoring in a list or if they have a lot of, you know, if you're fighting crossbows and they actually start picking up Warriors of the Dead before you even reach them. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that can deal with this list. It's terrifying to deal with in the wrong situation. If you're playing the wrong list against this, it can feel unbeatable, I imagine. Yes. But if you're playing 
the right lists and all the right missions even you can just kind of destroy the warriors that are taking taking almost no losses yeah like i've played against an army of the dead list before when i had an orc force without a uh shaman shaman i had a warhorn i had the outnumbering from the mortar army bonus so i was still coach three but it just wasn't enough it felt awful. yeah i yeah. can imagine it would that would feel awful but that's the thing with this list i feel i think it's just my matchups into it have always been matchups that it struggles into and so yes. i've always seen this list come out really weak but i know that there is a lot of strength to it especially with what you know what it brings yeah and the options it has it's just a really interesting one i do think it is quite powerful though in the right situation yeah uh, a little thing to talk about here as well uh so this book the gondot war book gave us a profile called heralds of the dead heralds of the dead are essentially might battles for the king of the dead so whilst the king is within three of a herald you can spend their will points so they're a zero uh, might three will two fate hero and they, uh, like I said, they give a will point to let the King of the Dead call any hero he wants. So he can't bump up or down uh, a, like, to wound well or winning the fight. He has to use his own single point of might to do that. But he gets to uh, essentially call moves, call strikes, call combats, all that sort of stuff for free. And the other thing that this gives uh, the Warriors of the Dead is a resistance to magic of any spirit model friendly obviously whilst within three inches of either of these and they're not named which means you can bring two of them and a king of the dead and i think if you're gonna bring uh if you're not gonna bring legless or gimli in this legendary legion you bring two heralds and the king of the dead they're actually pretty decent fighters too they're they only are. fight four but the um their two attacks is strength four fighting against courage strength four against courage is pretty good it's gonna be forcing against most things yeah um, Blades of the Dead, Blades like they the have dead. the right things, right? Yeah, they, they will do kill. They can be pretty solid killing tools as well. Yeah, I agree. But the I, most I really frustrating like the part, yeah. yeah, the most frustrating part about them is actually the two fate. Like they actually just become an incredibly frustrating yeah, defense. D- eight. D- eight, two wounds, two fate is really yeah. hard to crack. Yeah, and for 150 points, it basically turns the King of the Dead into a seven one one. Who one shots oh, people? Sorry, not even a seven one one. It's like seven. Like will be one seven one one because he's one might base. Uh, no, no, but he's not one will one fate. The King of the Dead. Oh, you're right. He'd be 7 yeah. 3 2 or something. Yeah, weird. something obscure like that. I think he actually has more will because he used oh, to. 7 get... 4, 1 yeah. 4. Yeah, yeah. But regardless, regardless, yeah, it makes yeah. it a pretty solid hero option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just very frustrating to deal with this sort of. Uh, like that sort of stuff. And magic is the best way I see the Army of the Dead get picked apart, usually. And so offering such expensive models, because Warriors are 15 points. Yes, or 14 they, or 15. That's, that's right? the thing that makes them so tricky, is because they get so expensive so quickly. Yeah. And then you get outnumbered, you get out fight valued, and if you can't bring them to bear quickly, or if you can't bring them to bear at all, really, if you just keep losing fights every time. It, it just gets too hard. Yeah. yeah. And it, it can be that snowball effect. Because I, I was playing Lake Town against the Army of the Dead, and I just encircled his entire army. And, and then just laughed and, and then, fight and, five kids. <laughs> yeah, well, the fight five kid, and then like every warrior that did was like trapped into each other. And even if I didn't kill one warrior, they just, the next one was trapped. Yeah. And I was rolling like four dice to every dice he had. <laughs> and that's the real issue, right? Yeah, that's what happens is you yeah. get into these situations where your opponent is rolling four dice for every dice you roll, and you only fight three. Like, that's really rough. Even if you shield, that still sucks. And if you're shielding, then you better hope Aragorn's somehow killing four guys every single turn and nothing is stopping him. And that's really asking a lot. Well, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of how most Aragorn lists tend to play. Yes, but other Aragorn lists tend to either have a more higher model count, maybe better fight value or something else. They have other tools. But this list also has its... And also he might have a horse. That's also That's true. the big one. Yeah. Having a horse. Yeah. That's that's what would make this. If you had a horse, man, then actually that might be pretty crazy. Mm. That'd probably be too much. It's it's hard to say <laughs> because this list can be so oppressive, <laughs> but it could also feel really awful to play as. Yeah, and I think that dichotomy is what makes this list such an interesting one. I would call this personally a gatekeeper army. Uh, what I mean by that is it has its matchups where if you are going to a tournament and you know that the army of the dead is going to be there, if you don't have a way to deal with it you're going to have a really bad game at least once because there'll probably be at least one or two Army of the Dead style lists that will cause you a lot of grief. Yes, and having finished with the king, let's talk about the one who steps on the king. <laughs> yes, so the Black Gate opens. Uh, this is, I think, my favourite Legendary Legion that came out of this book for the Forces of Evil. <laughs> uh, the Mumak is all fun and great, but this is the one that I probably played by far the most amount of games on in terms of a Legendary Legion out of Gondor at War. 
So, what do you get in it? Well, let me tell you. You get the Mouth of Sauron, who can bring an armoured horse. You get Mordor Troll Chieftains. You get Mordor Orc Captains. Uh, sorry, Moran and Orc Captains, who can bring shields and two-handed weapons. You also get the generic Orc Captains, which can bring a Wag, uh, who is other than the Mouth, your only other mounted option. You get uh, Orc Bows and shields on the Captain as well. You can bring Orc Warriors with their full suite of upgrades. You can bring Moran and Orcs with their full suite of upgrades. And you can bring Mordor Trolls, and you can bring the upgrade of the War Drum on that troll. What are the special rules you get in this Legion, though? So, the Black Gate Opens Force must include the Mordor Troll Chieftain. This Mordor Troll Chieftain is a hero of Valor and must be the Force's leader. Additional tre- Mordor Troll Chieftains are normal. So, the first one you bring is your army leader, and he becomes the greatest of the trolls. Yes. The Troll Chieftain that is your leader gains Fearless as a special rule. And an additional point of might, will, and fate, which is just huge. huge. Yes, he becomes a 3-2-2 two, two terror, who is fearless. <laughs> Strength 7, D8? Strength 7, D8, D8, fight 7. Three wounds, all the access to all the things that make monsters scary. Yeah. Terrifying. And the Hordes of Mordor is another very powerful special rule. Mordor Orc models gain a bonus of plus one to wound in a dual roll, in which they outnumber their opponent in the fight. Note supporting models do not count for either side for the purpose of this rule. So if you have a one-on-one with a spear support or a one-on-one where you have a spear support, neither of those will give you a plus one. But if you have two guys fighting one guy who has a spear support, your two guys get plus one to wound. Which is incredible. Um, let's jump into the list and I'll explain a little bit why. Yeah, let's step on the king. <laughs> yeah, so the first warband is the greatest of the trolls himself. He is the army leader. He leads five basic orcs with spear and shield, one basic orc with a spear, shield, and banner, five basic orcs with just a shield. Warband number two is identical. Well, the only difference is it's just a normal troll chieftain. Uh, warband number three is the mouth on an armored horse, leading six orcs with spear and shield, five orcs with shield. And the final warband is a captain, just a normal captain, because I brought a wag and a shield with him as well. He's leading five orcs with spear and shield and five orcs with just shield. So it's 750 points flat, uh, 9 points in might, and 47 monsters. Uh, 47 monsters, models. If only, yeah, yeah, if only it was 47 trolls. monsters, hey? Uh, but where this list really shines is you have three very definitive threats. You have the two trolls and the Mouth of Sauron. And I know the Mouth of Sauron doesn't have strike and is only a strength 4 model, but he is a magic caster. He has transfix, and he has four will to do it on. That suddenly turns this model, the Mouth of Sauron, into a terrifying thing on the other side of the table because suddenly your heroes aren't safe from a barge. Your heroes aren't safe from a troll chieftain calling a combat or the greatest of the trolls just running amok through your back lines because your hero that was designed to stop them, your Barmier captain of the White Tower, just started twiddling his thumb because he rolled a two on that resist jack. Yeah, I think that the Mouth of Sauron really synergizes as well with having two monster heroes. Yes. And I think most lists kind of need three threats. And Two Trolls and the Mouth of Sauron is a perfect triad of threats. The other thing about this list, which is really different to most other lists I've liked in Mordor, is there's no Moran and Orcs at all. Uh, the reason I've done this is basically because of the army bonus uh, that comes in this Legendary Legion. Yeah, you're aiming to outnumber so that you can get as many as plus one to wounds, because plus one to wounds is just better than plus one strength. Exactly, yes. And yeah, you trade a Pippa defense for it as well, but it's fine. Probably I think. worth it. I mean, given how orcs function, I think it's okay. Yeah. And I think it's interesting this list and Gothmogs. I think they're both, they have slightly different strengths, but they do both have that same weakness, I would say. That those equal horde count model armies are a big threat. This one, maybe even more so, because while the trolls can put out a pretty good killing power, you're now stuck on that D5. Yeah. And those strength three horde esque fight four armies will actually just tear through you. Yes. And that's the issue. Like, you actually have to be careful with the orcs in this army because they aren't as resilient. They aren't just going to, you know, shield and your opponent wins the fight. They don't roll a six, cool, the man and backs away. No, it's actually no, actually, a third of the time, sometimes even more, they get to faint. They <laughs> get to just have a go at your orcs and they will drop quickly. The other huge issue with this Legendary Legion. And it was the reason I kind of stopped playing it for a little bit was you don't have any way to boost that coach to. Uh, if you play into a terror line, <sighs> everything in this list, except for the greatest of the trolls, is coach two in terms of the troops. And he's the only thing that won't roll coach test. If he dies, 
and you break. <sighs> Good luck playing against Angmar. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the, that's the issue, right? Because the other troll chieftain, yeah, it's a two-one-one hero, but he's only coach four. Like he won't last that long if you're playing into a list that makes him coach three. Because you're gonna fail a coach check at some point in the game where you want to get that charge. So do you blow will then? And then what happens if you break? Yeah, it's such a hard thing to do. Yes, the mouth is high coverage and has four will as well. So breaking, as long as you have one of those two heroes alive, most of your orcs will be okay for at least a turn or two. But it's just so hard to play into that sort of matchup. And I think the troll chieftain, uh, the greatest of the troll, as in, he is such a linchpin, I would argue even more so than Gothmog almost, in the way that he functions within this list. Definitely the way this list is written now with only normal orcs without Moranans to be a bit more of a sturdy center he yeah. is definitely the build around of the list yes and i think if you don't want to do the normal uh orc style of this list uh the way i used to run this list was i dropped the second troll chieftain for just another captain so i did one captain on a wag and i did one Moranan orc captain basically and every orc became a Moranan orc with the same war gear options and i had access to like six or seven more models i forget exactly how the points yeah, yeah. broke up but i cracked 50 models with this list basically. yeah and it's interesting looking at um the list building for this list i think it's a very interesting case study on what um what legendary legions make you do and how they yeah. give you new weaknesses and trade for new strengths you get this insane greatest troll of all trolls but you have <laughs> access to a very limited pool of other named heroes of other threats because I mean, all captains of wargs are not particularly threatening, really, let's be honest. Yeah, but I think that's what makes them so powerful, is that your <laughs> opponent doesn't deal with them for three turns. And then an elf fights him and he loses. <laughs> but, like, legit, look, even right. then, if, like, an elf fights you, like, if you're on the charge, you, you're, the elf is on one dice, you roll three. Like, nah, yeah, but the elf but probably but still, shields. Besides the point, still, well, an elf with a spear just kills you. That's true, yeah. But, but, but regardless, that's the thing, though. You, you've got this great strength, you've got this fearless killer ass troll, and you have, you know, no other threats that are named that are powerful heroes. You yeah. can bring another, we can bring another troll shift in, but it's a pretty expensive investment. And you could argue how, you know, having two really big based models that you have to keep track of can get really tricky, even with all the buffs that monsters get. You know, big bases are annoying. They can get in the way. They don't have the versatility of, you know, even a cavalry base, let alone yeah. like a powerful fit hero like Shagrat. So it's very interesting. And I yeah. think that this list is a really good example of that. I mean, I think all of us so far have that in some way. I think this list has a very clear, big, big strength, and then these, you know, clearly yeah. defined downsides for bringing it and playing into it. I really wish there was something to let you bring a either a shaman or a way to bring a uh, warhorn into the into the list that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Like if there was an errata to say, uh, you know, <laughs> an orc warrior in this army list can bring a warhorn. I think I, that would be a must-buy of this list if that was an option to do. It would be very interesting, yes. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's all we have on this one. Do you have anything else to add? Not particularly, no. All right, well, let's yeah. close it out with the question of where's my Corsair Legendary Legion, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, I've got a hero yeah. in the book. Where is well, it? Well, better question is where's all my Gondor <laughs> Legendary <laughs> Legions? Hey? Well, you got uh, the Aragorn one, the Aragorn one, or the Aragorn one. And the Faded one, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, and well, Rangers of the Thilly. There you go. That's, that's, Gondor, cool. that's why Gondor's at war. Faramir. To be honest, because no one wants to play with them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where was Gondor? Well, that's a question. Not right, in this well, book. Yeah. yeah that's, I mean, kind of. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> besides the point, I think um, some really interesting lists in the context of this. I think this first one is a very interesting sort of blueprint for what comes after. And I do think we're going to talk about the other books as well. That a very interesting list in there too that sort of build on what started out here because these are fairly simple changes for the most part yeah and a lot of them are changes that kind of existed in previous rule sets uh so a lot of the narrative rules and things like that are rules that are in these legendary legions and trading you know the mortal army bonus for the hordes of mortal one in where you get the plus one to wound if you outnumber your opponent that used to be a power door thing that happened in one of the narrative scenarios. Like, it's really interesting to see that that has transitioned into match play scenario settings. Yeah, this now. this first one feels very built on. We're gonna put a theme in, and we don't really care what it does. We just not, want to test. We just the want. We just that. want some cool theme stuff, and maybe it's good, maybe it's not. Like the Men of the West one's obviously a bit of a flop, and the way it's written. But there's a bunch of really cool ones and some mediocre ones, and overall, it kind of evens out to some good stuff, some bad stuff. 
but overall pretty good for a first go at least <laughs> yeah i actually think they did a really good yeah. job designing everything in its entirety like this is a very difficult thing to do right like alexa and i can sit here and talk about oh i actually think Where these were points? so wrong and i think this is wrong and i could have done this better but we aren't the people who see all the behind the scenes right it's very easy to poke at something without actually understanding it and i think huge credit to the design team for actually getting this book off the ground and like running in the way that it does and the fact that even now after so many other supplements have come out you still see the armies in this book being played you uh, still yeah, see yeah. the characters you still see so much of this book prominently in the competitive scene I think there's a really interesting question I think we should tackle in a separate episode about you know where Legendary Legion stand in terms of power level I think that they're really good for the most part I think death used to be silly, but it was more silly because of what gambling did than what death does. Yes. Um, and then there's other lists like that. I think overall, I think that Legend of Legends are really cool and interesting. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's a good, good, good little talk. I think there's some good lists. Play them. They're pretty yeah. good. I think, yeah. Give me my pikes, Jay. Legend of Legends as a whole. That is a really good question. Though, I, think it's a, I think it's a video we should do now, at some point in the future. I think it'll be a really interesting discussion our thoughts what they should do what they do do where they stand yeah i think probably if you want to see that leave a like in the comments below <laughs> uh, that'd be great yes exactly man, hey. happy, isn't it? yeah and with that let's take us home uh, of course if this is content you do enjoy uh likes comments feedback all that sort of stuff is something we'd love it's not essential it's not stuff that has to happen it's stuff that we get to see uh why the stuff we do works what doesn't work things you'd like us to do differently and all that sort of stuff so if this is content you enjoy please consider of course doing all that sort of stuff and if not and if you just enjoy the listen that's fantastic as well have a lovely day